A few weeks ago, I tested the brand new Ford Focus ST Estate. And at the time I said it can be difficult to make a car practical as well as powerful. The ST packed quite a punch and it was pretty spacious. The car in this video takes things up to the next level. It is of course the brand new Audi S6 Avant, a rich dollop of V6 diesel performance wrapped up in a stylish and premium package. Hang on, a V6 diesel? That can't be right. Right, let's not muck about. This is a performance estate, so let's get straight onto the driving. As mentioned, the fifth generation S6 has done away with the old four liter V8 petrol, and in its place, we now have a three liter V6 diesel. It offers 349 horsepower, which is around 100 less than the V8. Oh dear. It's not all bad though, because this engine has more torque. More specifically, this has a barnstorming 700 newton meters, whereas the V8 petrol had 550. If you prefer that in pound feet, that's 516 pound feet for this engine compared to 406 for the V8. This power is delivered to all four wheels via Audi's famous and iconic Quattro all-wheel drive system. This power is also mated to an eight-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission. Zero to 60, that's dealt with in just 5.1 seconds, which I think is very impressive, bearing in mind this car weighs around two tons. The top speed is of course limited to 155 miles per hour, but I'm sure that'd be plenty for most buyers. In case you're bothered, this engine also has a 48 volt mild hybrid system to give you better acceleration, improved efficiency, and of course, improved fuel economy. Not that you're bothered about such things. Well, you maybe you never know. There's also an EPC, an electronically powered compressor. In essence, this gives the S6 a repeatable boost function, meaning you shouldn't get any turbo lag. Have I had any turbo lag in this car? Oh, I don't think so. All you have to do is simply tickle the accelerator and the responsiveness is amazing. This car feels really brawny and because of that high amount of torque, it just pulls and pulls and pulls. This could pretty much tow anything. It could tow someone's house. The EPC isn't the only clever bit of tech in this car because the S6 has got all-wheel steering. So in essence, when you're driving at speeds up to 37 miles per hour, the rear wheels are able to steer five degrees in the opposite direction to the front wheels, giving you better maneuverability and better agility. If you're going above 37 miles per hour, the rear wheels steer with the front wheels at a degree of two degrees to give you better stability. The eight-speed Tiptronic gearbox works really well, I have to say. It's seamless, it's slick, and you don't notice the changes, which is what you want from an automatic. Yet at the same time, it's still super responsive. It's, it is lightning quick. Of course, you have flappy paddles on the steering wheel, so if you want to take control yourself, you can do so. So I'm gonna slow down so I can build up a bit of speed again. So it's lock it over to the left-hand side, the, the gear selector, right in third. Yeah, and that's the speed limit. <laughs> that's our only problem with this car. On the public roads, you can't really exploit its performance because by the time you're, you're really stretching the S6 Advanced legs, you have to rein it in. Still, riding this wave of torque is, oh, it's very pleasurable. But what I like about the power, it's linear. It doesn't all come, come at you in one big dollop. It's smooth and the power is quite progressive. I like that. The Audi S6 may deliver a knockout blow, but it's pretty easy on the eye. It's classy and sophisticated as you would expect from an executive car. But at the same time, you can tell this isn't just your average A6. The car sits 20 millimeters lower and on bigger alloys, although these particular rims are an optional extra. It's also silver detailing to help mark this out as one of Audi's sportier offerings. And at the rear, you have no less than four exhaust pipe. No. No, 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 this can't be. They're fake as well. Four fake exhaust pipes. These are as real as the politicians promise. 
you know what, Audi? I'm not even angry. I'm just disappointed. <sighs> Fake exhaust pipes on an Essex. What kind of world do we live in? <sighs> I blame Brexit. There's many things I like about the interior, but I think, for me, one of the biggest things I like is the seating position. This may be a big estate car, but I'm sat low down. I feel hunkered down in here. I feel cocooned. It feels like I'm driving a sports car, which is what you know this car should be all about. <laughs> Speaking of sports cars, the handling is fantastic. It really, really is. The steering, is direct actually this car's got progressive steering so the more steering lock you put on the more direct it becomes if i'm going to be picky i would like the steering to be a little bit heavier but that's a personal complaint because i quite like a heavy steering setup the body is quite flat through the corners which is impressive bearing in mind this car is two tons and in the corners dare i say it feels nimble and agile that sounds mad doesn't it because this is quite a big, heavy car. But at the same time, through the corners, I don't think I would be able to guess this car is two tons. Big Audis of old have been renowned for being nose heavy and understeery. So does the S6 Avant suffer the same fate? No, it doesn't. And to help this car go around corners, sorry, I'm having too much fun here. To help this car go around corners, you have a few, you have a few clever bits of technology. For starters, you have the Audi Quattro all-wheel drive, which actually sends the majority of its power to the rear. So 60% goes to the rear axle and 40% goes to the front axle. But in extreme circumstances, up to 70% can be sent to the front wheels uh, and up to 85% can be sent to the rear wheels. The S6 also has a feature called wheel selective torque control. What is that I hear you ask? Well, in essence, when you're going through a corner, like I am now, to help give better grip, the car is able to break the inside wheels to help, you, to help guide you around the corner, and of course, to give you better grip and less understeer. If you want even more out of your S6, you can select the dynamic pack as an optional extra. This gives you dynamic steering, RS sport suspension, sport differential, and it also increases the top speed to 174 miles per hour. This car doesn't have the dynamic pack, but what it does have is the sport differential to give it even better cornering. And yeah, as I'm sure I've explained so far, the handling characteristics of the S6, phenomenal. <laughs> I'm really impressed by this car. Man, I need a rubber bank. I need one of these. Like, I don't need one, but I wouldn't mind one. Once again, it's time for Ask Aaron, the segment in which you guys get to ask me questions about whichever car I'm testing. Surprisingly, I didn't receive that many questions for the S6, but on the plus side, this should be nice and quick. First question, what do you think of the fake exhaust pipes? Oh, I hate them. I despise them. I loathe them. They really get me angry. Can you tell? And the other question, is it a petrol or a diesel? It's a diesel. There we are. Short and sweet, like a gnome dipped in caramel. Gnome dipped in caramel. Where do I get these analogies from? <sighs> Time to move on. As you would expect from any modern performance car, there are, of course, a choice of driving modes. So I have efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic and individual. Let's face it, dynamic is the place to be because it really turns this car into a sophisticated beast. Like a Yeti wearing a dinner suit. Because this car has got the optional adaptive air suspension, even in dynamic mode, the ride is forgiving and compliant. You could easily drive this car every day in dynamic and not break your back. Yes, okay, it is a little bit fidgety down here but this particular road surface isn't isn't that great it's quite bumpy it's quite a few undulations 
but my point stands, well, in my opinion. However, if you pop it into comfort, everything becomes more mellow, the steering becomes lighter, of course, the engine and the gearbox aren't quite as aggressive, and the ride, it is wafty, it really is. Just floating along, down the road, and all of a sudden, it feels like I'm driving a V6 powered cloud. <laughs> Properly impressive. This is easily the most comfortable Audi I've ever driven. Even in dynamic mode, I'd, I'd say this is the most comfortable Audi I've ever driven. It's really nice, I have to say. And you could, in my opinion, you could easily drive this car for a long distance, even in dynamic mode and feel pretty supple and refreshed at the end of your journey. Now, of course, the air suspension is quite a costly option and not every one of you watching would want to spec it, but if you have the money left over, I would strongly urge you to get the adaptive air suspension because it is bliss, pure bliss. The air suspension also works alongside the driving modes, of course, so in dynamics it's firmer, whereas in comfort it's more supple. You can also raise the ride height as well. So if you want to have that added bit of comfort and ground clearance for those poorer roads, you can raise the suspension. But if you want to go into full attack mode and hunker the car down for cornering, of course you can lower the suspension. There's plenty to like about the Audi S6 Avant, but you'll need deep pockets if you want to have one, as it starts from £62,745. Standard features include 20-inch alloys, S-styling, matrix LED headlights, sports seats finished in Valcona leather, raw zone climate control, Audi virtual cockpit, an 8.8-inch touchscreen, an 8.6-inch touchscreen, DAB radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity, navigation, Audi parking system plus, keyless go, autonomous emergency braking, and lane departure warning, to name a few. However, as you would expect from any Audi, things can get quite out of hand if you pick too many options. For example, the car you see here is almost £78,000. Now, to put that into some kind of perspective, the total cost of all of the optional equipment is almost enough to buy a brand new Ford Fiesta. Ouch. Not only is the S6 Avant powerful, but it is practical as well, thanks to its estate body shape. Open up the electric tailgate and you'll be greeted by 550 litres worth of space. I know, I know, it isn't the largest boot an estate can offer you, but I'm sure you'll agree that is plenty of space. The opening for the boot is wide, it's pretty practical. The load lip is low. There is a little bit of a step into the boot, but loading bigger, heavier items or dogs should be easy. If you want to load longer items, such as skis, you can do so because the middle seat folds down individually. However, if you want even more space, you can, of course, fold down the rear seats altogether, so they are 40, 20, 40. Fold them down and you'll get an improved capacity of almost 1,700 litres. Folding down the rear seats is easy, you have a lever either side, so pull them like so, and the rear seats collapse. They don't fold flat, which may irk some buyers, but they fold flattish. As well as the practical levers, you also have a hook either side, so you can hang up a bag of shopping, well, or bags if, you, if you've done a big shop. Let's face it, you've got a big boot, so why not? It's also a little bit of storage on the left-hand side and some extra storage underneath the boot floor. You don't get a spare wheel as standard, but you do, of course, get a tyre repair kit. Step into the rear and you'll find that even if you're a taller person, space back here will be good for you. Speaking of which, I'm six foot two and the driver's seat has been set for me. Even so, I've got a good amount of space. Knee room is decent. I've got a, an agreeable amount of leg room as well. This car does have the optional panoramic roof, but even so, my headroom isn't too bad. What I will say though, is I think you'd struggle to fit three people in the rear, particularly as the transmission tunnel is large. But if you do keep the middle seat free, those in the rear can make use of the center armrest for better comfort. And there's also some storage in here. You have cup holders that fold out in a rather nifty fashion. Yeah, I like that feature, that's pretty cool. And you have a bit of storage just under here. Not loads, but it could come in handy. Speaking of storage, the door bins are of a decent size. I've got my 
500 milliliter bottle in there. And I've got a bit of space left over in fact. And there's also a bit of netting in the back of the front seats for a bit of added storage. For comfort, you've got climate control that comes into the rear. And if you want to charge your smartphones or your tablets on the move, you can do so because not only do you have a 12 volt socket, but you have two USB ports in the rear. So yeah, I'm quite impressed by that Audi, well done. The front also offers a good amount of space and getting comfortable here is very easy. Not only do you have these wonderful super sport seats finished in Valcona leather, but these are also eight way electronically adjustable with electric lumbar support. Better still, as an option, I also have an electronically adjustable steering wheel. So I barely need to lift a finger to get the driving setup I want to in here. Ah, that's very pleasant. There's also a memory function as well. So if this is going to be a family car shared amongst more than one driver, you have two memory functions. So getting your personal driving setup should be quick and easy as long as it's saved, of course. Moving on to the practicality, the door bins at first don't look overly big, but if you use the right angle, you can get a large bottle in there. In there. This is 1.5 litres, it fits in like so. In the middle, you have two cup holders. As you can see, I've got a smaller bottle and my coffee cup. There's also a little slot here where you can pop the car key, which I really like, it's a nice feature, as well as a 12 volt socket. Lift up the adjustable armrest and you'll find two USB ports, an SD card slot and a SIM card slot. There's also a wireless phone charging pad in here as well, but I'm pretty sure that is an optional extra. There's also a little cubby hole to the right hand side of the steering wheel, which isn't large, but you should be able to fit in your wallet or any other smaller items, perhaps some travel mints, that kind of thing. There's no sunglasses holder, which I do find a little bit disappointing, but you do of course get a glove box, which is chilled. So what better place in which to keep my sausage rolls? Lovely. I think it's about time we speak about fuel economy. I know it's a boring subject, but some of you may want to know. So on a combined run, this offers 35.8 mpg, that's using the new WLTP method of testing, and it emits 171 grams per kilometer of CO2. This means for the first year of BED, you will be required to pay 1,280 pounds. In case you're lucky enough to have this as a company car, if you are, I want your job, then the BIK is 37%. Imagine this as a company car. Another area which may not be of interest to all of you, but given the type of car this is, I think it is quite a key area, and that is refinement. Well, let me just shut up for a few moments. Refinement isn't too bad considering the type of car this is. Wind noise is well controlled. There is a bit of road noise, but I do have the optional 21 inch alloy, so they are bigger than the standard rims you'd get in this car. But other than that, I do feel cocooned in here. And in fact, the tires have got something called Taurus absorbers. Now, if, in case you have no idea what that is, because I must admit, I had no idea when I first read that. Basically, you have foam layers that are bonded within the tire to stop the droning noise coming into the cabin. Hmm, clever stuff. Now, I would argue it will probably work better on the 20 inch alloys as opposed to these alloys, because if I'm gonna be picky, there is tire noise coming into the cockpit. It's not overly intrusive, but it is noticeable. However, at the same time, would I care if I owned this car? No, it's, a, you know, it's got a, a diesel V6 in it. This is a performance car. It's bound to make a little bit of noise. So time to sum up the Audi S6 Avant. I'll be honest, I've enjoyed this car more than I thought I would, and it's been more thrilling than I was expecting. It's got a lot to offer. It's got pace, space, high levels of comfort and refinement, as well as plenty of technology. So for a performance daily driver, I think this ticks all the boxes. Oh yeah, speaking of boxes, if you are buying this car, don't go too mad in regard to ticking the option boxes because you're gonna find this car will get very expensive very quickly. 
I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to like, subscribe, and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.